Ever since I started my channel, I have received countless comments asking me how to study content rather than study habits. So today I just wanted to cover a few different study techniques that you can use to save time and your grades. The first thing that I wanted to talk about is using virtual versus paper notes. Over the years, iPad notes have become the new norm, but did you know that they are not as effective or as useful as we might think? There has been so much research done on this over the years, and it's actually been found that when you handwrite notes with pen and paper as opposed to an iPad or when you type your notes, it has so much of a larger improvement on how much you're able to actually recall and retain that information. So, for example, when you're in a lecture and you're mindlessly typing away what the professor is saying, sometimes it is very easy to get so caught up in the mindless task that is typing now. I think typing used to be way more productive and beneficial when we were starting to get used to computers in the technological realm and in the educational space. But now that computers have become a place where we frolic and go on social media and we're sending emails and checking our things and doing all of these different things. I think that slowly typing notes has become a very mindless task, especially because most of us are able to even type without looking at the keyboard, right? So it's become a very mindless task that I can do while doing anything else, right? So sometimes when I used to try to type my notes in class, I would catch myself that I wasn't even really listening. I was just almost word for word dictating what the professor was saying. That is one of the reasons why I switched to paper notes and it has been such a savior. Not only is it saving me time from having to go back and read an entire dialogue or a transcript of the entire lecture that I thought I was listening to, but I can do drawings, I can color code, I can kind of go back and actually reference these notes and I have something physical to flip through. Basically, the idea behind it is that active writing and the motor skills that are required to actually write your notes on paper um, requires extra efforts. And then this is actually able to engage different neural circuits that typing, for example, does not need to activate. So handwriting actually forces students to summarize concepts into their own words and use more of their attention and focus on what's actually being placed on the paper as opposed to the mindless task that is typing. And you can ask other people for notes, but they're not going to hit the same as your own notes. And this leads me to my next point, which is active recall. Active recall is something that I recommend to every single person. When I was helping teach bio and chemistry courses in college, I would tell all of my students this. It was my number one study technique that I would tell everyone. So let's say you're studying intermolecular forces, right? So you're going to grab a sheet of paper and you're going to write down everything that you know. What's an intermolecular force compared to an intramolecular force? What are the different examples? Write out different um, compounds that show these different molecules that have each one. And then you're going to go in with a different color pen or a highlighter or a marker. You can even do this on a whiteboard. And you're going to fix whatever you put wrong on the paper and you're going to rewrite whatever you're missing, right? So let's say that you mentioned a certain intermolecular force, but you realized that you didn't really define it in the way that you were meant to. You're gonna go back, you're gonna rewrite it, and you're just gonna go in and fill in the gaps of anything that you missed. I did this for high school when I was studying history courses. I did this in college when I was doing chemistry and even biochemistry when I would write all of the amino acids that I could remember. They're PKAs of their side chains. Basically, you're going to word vomit, for lack of a better term, onto the paper. You're going to see everything that you know, the things that you don't know. It improves long-term retention and it reduces the need for repetitive studying. Even if you doubt it, I say try it one time. If you don't like it, I have another method for you. The next thing I wanted to talk about is maybe handwritten notes aren't your thing. That's completely fine. Some people have grown accustomed to their iPads using GoodNotes, Notability, things like that. That's completely fine. So another app or website that you can use because the app is not free, but the website is, is Anki. It's essentially a space repetition site and you can make these flashcards. I talk about it a lot on my channel. I was a really big hater at first because I just thought it was BS. I hate flashcards. I still hate flashcards. Handmade flashcards don't work for me. There's a lot of pre-made decks on Anki that you can download and use. I use some of them for the MCAT. I use the Miles Down deck. There's the Jack Sparrow deck. These have weird names because 
people just name them whatever they want. You can upload images. You don't need to pay like you have to pay on Quizlet to upload images of your own. And it's so useful because say you click and you do a card and you can basically rate it from easy to hard, right? So it's one to four, four being it was really easy. I was able to answer the question really quickly. And one means I need to see it again pretty soon. Based on how you rate the flashcard is how soon they're gonna give it back to you. So let's say that you're like, damn, I really did not get this question. I'm gonna put that it was hard and it's gonna give you another question and another question. And then the same question that you got wrong, you're gonna get again. And you're gonna get it again and again until you get it right. You can also split screen it so you can type Anki cards out and make your own flashcards in your own deck if you so decide to do that. It's worth a shot. If you want to save time, this is a very good way to passively study. I say passively because it doesn't require a lot of effort and you don't even realize how much you're starting to know and remember until the next time you open them. The next thing that I wanted to talk about was actually enforcing your ability to recognize concepts. So interleaving is when we mix in related topics, allowing us to mentally incorporate existing knowledge with this new information that we are learning. So for example, if I'm studying the endocrine system, you want to also be able to understand how these different things are affecting the nervous system and how everything kind of works together, right? It's kind of like incorporating these two different aspects and weaving them together to get a more holistic understanding of what's happening during that time period or what's happening when these bonds are happening or when this hormone is released, what is the ultimate effect on the body, right? To not only ensure that you can grasp the material, but you know the material enough to make connections with different things and understand how it's all working together. The next one that I wanted to talk about was meditation with aiding focus and recall. I know, everyone wants to talk about meditation, everyone wants to talk about journaling, but have you tried it? If you tried it and you didn't like it, that's something different. But if you haven't tried it and you don't think it's gonna work, just try it. I mean, kind of biased because you don't think it's going to work, so it might not work because you might placebo yourself. The fact that meditation and all of these mindfulness habits have actually been shown to increase gray matter in the brain is insane. If you don't know, gray matter made up of an accumulation of dendrites and neuronal cells and a bunch of different things in your brain that are associated with memory and retention, learning, problem solving. On the other hand, a decrease in gray matter activity is actually correlated heavily with disorders like depression, schizophrenia, Alzheimer's. So it's beneficial not only for studying, but in the long run and for your overall health to just take care of yourself. So if you really wanna save time and you wanna save energy, you need to make time for yourself and you need to prioritize yourself and your mental well-being because it's going to be really difficult to try to focus and to be productive. If meditation for you means sitting down crisscross and closing your eyes and just taking deep breaths for one minute, that's perfectly fine. If meditation for you means going to the gym and doing a super heavy lift, that's perfectly fine. Meditation for you means just going outside for two minutes, that's fine too. Whatever your kind of meditation is, do that because it's beneficial. It's been shown to be beneficial. Those are all the things that I wanted to talk about. I did not mention this in my last video. I put it in the description box, but I want to know if you guys have any questions or any videos that you guys would like to see in the future. Yeah, hopefully these study techniques work and they help you save time.